everyone, I'm Amadara Mills. Welcome to Inside Health. In this video series, we explore various departments, units, and the services of the Tobago Regional Health Authority. We'll take you behind the scenes to show you how they contribute to the quality healthcare services provided to you, our people. Now, renal failure is a growing concern for medical practitioners. It can lead to patients having to access dialysis treatment three times per week. So we've come to the dialysis department. It's located at the Scarborough Health Center out here in Backlet. We'll be speaking with medical practitioners as well as patients to get a better understanding of the dialysis services provided here. We'll also find out what's being done to prevent persons from having to go on dialysis. So come along as we explore this department. Give us an idea of how many patients you all treat currently. Okay, uh, we, has, uh, uh, we have now 59 patients in hemodialysis and 20 patients in peritoneal dialysis. Total patients be 79 patients. And is, you know, the issue of renal failure and persons getting dialysis a growing concern for medical practitioners? Tell us why. Yes, I think uh, renal failure is a big concern for, uh, for the doctor, for the nurse, for the patient, family, and, and chronic renal disease is a, a big problem too. Uh, what happened? Uh, is we, ana we analyze the amount of patients that we have in dialysis. I can say, before I say, 59 patients receiving dialysis here and 20 patients in peritoneal dialysis. But we have in renal clinic around 300, 300 patients uh, we follow in renal clinic. And the majority percent of the patients suffer diabetes and hypertension. And if you analyze uh, the cost for this dialysis, very expensive, when the normally the, the patient need to pay in private unit, uh, like uh, between 100 and 150, 150 US per session. And the patient normally need to get 12 sessions per, uh, per, per month. Give us an idea of the stages of renal failure. Okay, the renal failure has different stages, stage, especially uh, running to uh, stage one to stage five. Normally in stage one to two, uh, stage one, two, and three need to follow by primary care, okay? Because in this in this state you you follow uh, diabetes, hypertension, you have possibility to control this situation. But in stage four and five, it's different state, need to follow by nephrology. In stage four, it's very important for us. I recommend the older doctor that is they know any patient that uh, uh, suffers renal failure and they consider the patient be in stage four. They send the patient to a renal clinic in order because in this stage we we normally we write a letter to go to renal committee. This is the committee to get approval for to get hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. We at, at this stage we write a letter to go to medical social worker dietitian. Okay, and in some patient we uh, in some patient when the patient be approved for hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis, if the patient is approved for hemodialysis, we started to do a fistula. A fistula is a connection between artery and veins, you know, in order to get dialysis. And another, and another patient is, another patient, when it's very close to stage five, we try to work in kidney transplants in order to get a kidney transplant before to start the dialysis. Okay, and in stage five, this is a stage that only the 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 way is to to get hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis or the final treatment is kidney transplant. Okay. So it's very important for persons, not just patients, to maintain a healthy lifestyle, eat properly, get exercise, and so. Yes, it's very important. You know, this is a good control of diabetes, good control of uh, high blood pressure, uh, change the life. You know, eat properly. 
The kidneys are important for us to um, maintain a water balance in our system. It also helps to clear out toxins that can build up in our body, as well as it maintains calcium and phosphorus metabolism, as well as electrolytes, which are the salts in our body. So, as I said before, our patients are not able to um, maintain these different um, activities in the body by themselves. So with dialysis, they are able to get the toxins out of their body. They're able to maintain the water balance as well as the electrolytes um, in the body. And also the kidneys help to build up your blood count. So um, with dialysis, it helps to also raise and stabilize their um, blood count. There are 11 machines in the open unit to treat with renal failure cases only. The two machines in the isolation area cater to renal failure patients who have other illnesses such as HIV and hepatitis C. One dialysis machine is located at the Scarborough General Hospital for emergency purposes. Patients are dialyzed between 3 to 4 hours per session. Nurses are assigned to each patient, one nurse to about three patients approximately. Within that time, patients are cannulated or needled. They are monitored. Blood pressure readings are done every half an hour. If needs be that they need closer monitoring, blood pressures could be done even closer every 15 minutes. So we assess our patients, do our mini interviews, how was your last treatment, any problems when you went home. We even assess when they come, any signs of swelling, any signs of distress, so that we can work with our parameters on the machine to give them a better quality of treatment during the day. All right. And how many, currently, how many patients are on dialysis coming to the department? Right. In hemodialysis, we have approximately 59 patients. 59. 59. Okay. So it's a lot. In terms of the scheduling and so, how is that done? Is right. it that you do that um, aspect of it? Yes. I roster all the patients. Uh, we have patients come in Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's the same set of patients. And uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. I chose uh, hemodialysis unit to be a part of as I was fascinated with them coming for treatment at times and you know the state that they left that they came in sorry and how they left feeling good and looking well. It's such a plus it's so wonderful you know such a ease because you know sometime after having dialysis in Trinidad and have to catch a plane to come back to Tobago and the delays in the airport and all like that, it was terrible. It is so good to have it in Tobago. I cannot desire better from the doctors and nurses. Every month they take our bloods to see, you know, how we are going and they would rectify what, well, if your blood count fall, well, they would give you medication to build it up. And, you know, so the doctors are doing their part, and the nurses manage us very, very, very well on the machine. Very good. I can't desire more. Very good. Well, that is why I'm here for 20 years. As we learned more about this department, we found out about another form of dialysis. It's called peritoneal dialysis. Peritoneal dialysis treatment is where the peritoneum, which is a part of the body, is used to filter the waste from the patient's body. With this form of treatment, there are no bloodlines. Everything takes place within the peritoneum of the body as opposed to hemodialysis where you'll have the bloodlines with the patient bloods running venous and arterial pathway in order for the, the soiled blood to be clean and to return the blood which has already been cleaned. Currently, how many patients do you see in the peritoneal unit? Okay, at present we have a number of 20 patients on a day-to-day -day basis, we may have like five patients coming in for review. Apart from that, we have monthly review where all the patients come in to be clinically assessed by the nephrologist. And both, so in general, the peritoneal treatment patients, you will teach the patients 
what they do and then they do it at home. Oh yes, one of my main roles is to teach and train the patients how to operate peritoneal dialysis for themselves at home. I also do home visits. I also foster interaction between the nephrologist and the patients. I'm very passionate about being a peritoneal dialysis nurse and the reason for this is that, is that being in that field, it helps me to understand the patients and to appreciate them. For example, I get exposed to their different subcultures, backgrounds, so it enables, it enables me to better care for them from a total aspect. We did a surgery in certain the tube and they gave us a machine to take at home. They give us the liquids to take at home and the caps and what we do is we set up the machine home and the liquids and we have a time period that we operate on every day with the, the PDM fluids. Oh, I see. So you, and you said it's every day you would have to get this um... Yes, every day, 10 hours, 6 cycles. So what I would do, I would go on the machine from sometimes between 2, 3 till midnight. Which is, which is comfortable for me. They do an excellent job, Dr. Gomez and uh, wonderful team, those Price and them, excellent. I had to thank God for them because I think they are an amazing group of people. They're doing an excellent job in Tobago. This department, <laughs> boy, I don't know, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't want to give man too much praise above God, but I mean, with God, with the doctors, and your willingness to be obedient is the key to success. So you would have mentioned that there's a renal clinic and you indicated there's one at the Scarborough General Hospital at the Outreach Patient Department and there's also one at the Delaford Health Center which has now been temporarily moved to the Roxborough Health Center. Give us an idea of why these clinics were set up. Okay, uh, uh, before I, I, I told you that we have a good relation between primary care and secondary care. In order to get a better facility for the patient, we have a, a clinic in, in, a Scarborough, in, a, in a Scarborough General Hospital every week. Um, every Wednesday we have a clinic, uh, 8 to, to 12. And any patient that has a renal failure, especially in stage 4 and stage 5, we follow this patient in order to avoid that the patient arriving to renal fail, uh, to dialysis very early in, and control the diabetes and control hyperpressure uh, in, uh, in this situation. And we have also, we have a clinic in De La Four. In De La Four is in order to avoid that the patient that for the countryside need to arrive, uh, need to travel to, to the hospital it, to get better facility for our patient, you know. At the renal clinics, medical practitioners monitor patients who have other conditions such as nephrotic syndrome, polycystic kidney disease, sickle cell anemia, hypertension, diabetes, and other kidney infections. Patients are guided on what they should and should not consume. They are also advised on the dosage of their medication. To have dialysis in the island is very important because they get better quality of life in the, our patient, you know? Be because before 2002, all the patients that we have suffered so renal failure, need to we need to transfer the patient to Trinidad. And at the present, we don't need to transfer any patient to Trinidad. The cost be less, you know? Because before, we need to, we need to pay the ticket to go, uh, to go to Trinidad, to go and back to Tobago, okay? We have more, uh, we have possibility to follow a patient very close, okay? Uh, any procedure that the patient need to do, we, need, we have possibility to do it here in Tobago. Uh, dialysis in Tobago is very important.